okay so today we will discuss about computation of probability measure in continuous probabilistic modeling what does it mean our sample space is no more discrete it is continuous and what is meaning of continuous set or continuous sample space single single answer or computation a smart answer try to give what is meaning of continuous set you had already seen the definition of continuous set no? what is you fail to write or uh, put all the element of the set in a single sequence form what is meaning of continuous sample space or continuous set that means you fail to write uh, the sample space omega single sequence cannot be written in a single sequence you fail to write in this form that is meaning of continuous the sequence everyone might be aware of that now so just express things in form of that you fail to write in that form so that is meaning of continuous now next uh, someone will argue further now tell me then what does it mean then you can say that it contains uh, this it contains intervals or union of intervals the sample space it is now continuous means it contains interval or union of interval some kind of interval it is containing it is containing interval or union of interval second uh, uh, thing that should come in your mind it, it is containing some kind of interval like interval a b close or open or whatever interval some interval it contains like uh, you better you can call it it contains some kind of interval you are uh, saying that better write it it is containing an interval a comma b is containing in the sample space so i am again repeating what is continuous sample space what would be your answer in a single sequence form in a single sequence form again i am saying in case of countable or discrete we are able to write discrete or countable set in a single sequence form but in uh, case of continuous we are not able to write it is not equal to yeah in a single sequence form so we simply say that what does it mean further if you try to see further in deeper way that means it contains some intervals the continuous set contains some intervals so like that second so, so in combined bo these both are part of defining continuous <coughs> set okay B both you can say like that so that is the now once you are having continuous set can you always define a compute probability measure so there are various kind of continuous set if i say interval a finite interval ab then you can talk about what is meaning of finite there how you will say it is a finite interval why interval ab is finite or interval 0 1 is finite why it is finite because there are uh, if you talk about from point perspective there are infinitely many points uncountable number of points are there why it is finite length is finite what is the length of the interval 0 1 one so it is a finite thing so finite is coming from the length perspective because interval is a what one dimensional set if you are going area then again two dimensional kind of things will come there and then that term finite area or infinite area two dimensional object if you go to then length will not come there their area will come here if you come in uh, a space in r3 you will talk about volume finite volume or infinite volume so that kind of structure so finiteness we are defining in case of uncountable or continuous set we are defining through length through area through volume depends upon what situation is there okay are you getting meaning of this or not so here very much interesting that finite structure in continuous sample space will define and we come up with uniform law of occurrence what would be meaning of that uniform law of occurrence what would be meaning of that so uniform law that uh, 
will derive from the finite structure in the continuous state. We are observing finite structure in the continuous state. Okay. Have you seen? Uh, have you seen somewhere uh, that uh, sub-interval concepts, dividing interval into some int uh, sub-interval? Anywhere have you seen? Have you seen or not? Uh -huh. Or have you seen uh, finding uh, integration as a summation? So definitely in calculus you might have already seen summation. That means uh, you you are having a function. You are having like this way. This kind of function. You have been asked to compute area of this region between A to B. So how will uh, so this area, uh, despite of uh, asymmetric nature of this uh, region, uh, you can find area of this one. It is given by simply in short. We say that uh, uh, it is actually uh, integration of the function in the given interval. Okay, but how you have numerically? How you can compute that? Computer doesn't know all these. We know. We know all these. Computer doesn't know. How computer will treat this? How computer will treat this? I am just giving idea of finiteness in uncountable state or continuous state. How computer will compute it? It will first divide the interval a b into finite number of sub interval. So, this, this point. Why it is dividing? So, it is equivalent to say that you are dividing the area into a smaller and what regular structure for which you can easily compute the area till uh, uh, which uh, uh, a structure are having uh, definition of area in a very simple form that rectangle like uh, cube like those kind of things. So, here you can divide into the form of rectangles. So, it is not rectangle. If I say that dividing area in term of rectangle, you are dividing it like this way. Does it look like rectangle? The first one, does it look like rectangle? This, does it does this look like rectangle? What are these then? What are these? Or some kind of quadrilateral? Some kind of quadrilateral. What does it? Uh, does it look like a rectangle or not? Not. If it is not looking like that, then what we have to do? We have to do two things. Not that one is refinement. No, we do not do further division. We actually come up with approximation. Approximation of this a strip. You can simply call it a strip. This one is the first a strip, a strip. Further approximation of a strip. So, how many way we can we can approximate uh, this a strip? Are you getting meaning of a strip or not? A strip. You take a page and tear in two pieces, vertical tear or horizontal tear, you will get a strip, then it's a strip. So, like that. Also, uh, you got a strip. So, in this a strip, uh, this a strip is not uh, in our a structure, regular structure, so that we can compute area. So, what we have to do? We can approximate it. If you do approximation, there are two approximation. One is under approximation, another one is over approximation. So, what is this one? If you try to make approximation, <coughs> approximation by normal, uh, sorry, uh, rectangle. This one is under approximation. Okay, there would be another approximation, over approximation. If you make rectangle with this approximation by rectangle. Under approximation and over approximation. So, another approximation will come like this way. Two approximation, everyone might be able to see both approximation. So, how many approximate? So, how, how many n number of rectangles would be there? Generally, n we are taking. So, uh, some all these under approximation rectangle. So, that you can denote it by small n. Okay. A small n, I am giving here, here curl. A small n. So, how you compute a small n? How 
how you are computing it? How you will compute? Area of this rectangle. How you will? Yes. What is the height of this? Under under uh, uh, approximated rectangle. What is the height of this? F of f of you have to give name to these points this point you can call it uh, yeah, x naught you can call it x naught or f of a x naught is what uh, a then you, you will come to see x1 then you will like to define in that way uh, xb you call it xn the last point this is the partition we call it partition of the interval a b now tell me in the under approximation you are defining it like this way uh, you are talking about x k k varies from where to where x 1 to n and what would be uh, this one is height of the under under approximated uh, rectangle and width will come here call it delta k width that means length of the sub interval delta k but uh, for the sake of simplicity what you do you can take uniform rectangles rect uniform sorry uh, rectangle with same length delta you can simply say that delta so yeah if you are saying delta so if you are saying all the rectangle we are dividing in a very uh, accurate way in such a way, such a way all the rectangle are having same width so if it is having same width what is the width delta b minus a divided by n how many points n points n rectangles you have taken it so what would be the if n number of rectangles are having a same width and total width is what of interval b minus a so n time delta equal to n time delta equal to b minus a so delta is equal to b minus a divided by n so that's way and here b minus a divided by n so that counting is coming so here you can say that if you are going for under approximation then k varies from 1 to n but if you go for over approximation then k will vary from 0 to 0 to n minus 1. If you do over approximation, then height will be given by this now. Height will, are you able to see this or not? Uh, if you go for over approximation, and you over approximation, then height will be given by this point. The, you are start some interval, left approach. But if you do under approximation, height will be given by right to left. The sub interval right to left approach. Right to left. So this one is the height. Is not coming. Are you getting? Are you able to see this or not? Okay, so so in the that you have to visualize it here. So the write it another thing. So k goes from one to n, and write big S. I'm not putting here curl here. Uh, okay, S n. So this would be n, not x kind of thing. Writing without pad or a stylus is difficult. This will go from k varies from 0 to n minus 1. See the summation. All these you should uh, understand. All these, all these are coming from your high school. Uh, plus two. These things you might have seen, but you might not have given attention to this. Only that you might not have observed. So you should come this. You should see all these. X k minus one. So x k. Simply put it x k. K varies from 
S K zero, you are starting with like that. Delta K. X delta K. I think uh, it might be clear to everyone. Now tell me where this area falls. What would be the lower bound? What would be uh, this area would be greater than a small x S n and would be less than equal to capital S n. Are you seeing this or not? So it is between a small S n and capital S n. It is coming between these two. So this, uh, 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 this you have already seen that. Now tell me, uh, what about this n? How it is inequality is there? When it uh, it will be equal? When that? Uh, what is meaning of this sign? Less than equal to. That means it say that it is having two meaning. It is either less than or equal. If I say one is less than equal to two, is it true? If I say, is it? Think you are saying that it is wrong. Listen here, less than equal to it is defined by two things either this. So, it is true when any of these two is true, any one of these two, any one of these two. Are you getting meaning of this? So, when you say one is less than equal to two, that means one is less than two, that one is true. So, by default, this, this one is true. If someone is writing one is less than equal to 1. Is it true? Yeah. Why? Because one is, 1 is equal to 1. So, this concept it is true. Okay. Do you have discrete mathematics uh, in this semester or next semester? Uh, probably next semester I think you, you will see that. Logic, first order logic concept will come there. there you can. So, so, that is the criteria. So, you should uh, carry forward this one. So, when equality will take place? When you do refinement, you keep on doing much, much more partitioning. That means keep on refining the rectangles, keep with a smaller width. Keep on refining. What does it means? If you are refining the uh, rectangles, what, what does it mean? It say that you are increasing n. You are increasing n. Are you getting meaning of this or not? If you do refinement of the rectangles, that means you are increasing the n. That means the width will decrease. If n is increasing, then delta will decrease and it will approach to 0. It will approach to 0. So, if you take a condition like limit n tends to infinity or that means delta is approaching to 0, you can take in both ways. So, then inequality will vanish and you will have equality. Then n is approaching to, I am just uh, talking about uh, uh, all these things so that you will be very much comfortable in finding finite structure in continuous shape. And here, this uh, again here you have to put here limit, same limit you have to put here throughout. So, in that case, Inequality will vanish and you will get equality. So, how you computed integral here? Through finite sum, through finite structure. How you got it? You come up with these points, finite points x0, x1 up to xn. You come up with. So, you have written A in term of like this way. This is AB the interval a b you have written at like the name of this one if you are, I talk about uh, 
uh, it is a little bit complicated uh, theorem in mathematics that we call it Hanniborel theorem. <laughs> have uh, you might not have, have heard Hanniborel theorem? He was a great mathematician. So, if you Google it, you will come to know. Borel was one mathematician contributed a lot in probability. So you are writing A B as in the last case I had discussed about partition of set. Partition of set I had discussed now. This one is also a set, but it is a continuous set. How you do perform partition? Partition of this you perform in a very uh, a smart way, it is coming like this way. Uh, a B you are, you are writing it as uh, partitioning into sub interval in such a way the common would be only one point the terminal point the sharing common terminal point apart from that there would be no common thing. So it would be A B you are dividing into n partition and that is where A B interval A B you are writing as a union of those sub intervals. So, sub, first sub interval you can call it uh, I1, this one is the I1, you can call it I1, the second sub interval would be what? What would be second sub interval? X1, X2. So, it is X1, X2. Likewise, you will come to find what is the last sub interval? The last sub interval would be x n minus 1 X. What is Xn? B. What is X0? X X0 we call it X0. That one is A. You have started. So that means you have written this uh, interval AB as a union of n sub interval I0, I1, I2, I3 and you will go up to union IN. What is the other way to denote it? Like summation there is a notation for union if you are having n number of union. So you are coming with union notation and here you say that K, K varies from 1 to n and you are writing here sub interval x k minus 1 comma just uh, uh, I am sorry that uh, these are very slow in writing. I am not using a styler or something like that. That is why blackboard teaching is much good in mathematics. Uh, it is taking a lot of time, but I am trying. I am giving my effort a lot. So, is it visible to everyone? Okay. Okay, and uh, so uh, you have written A B as a union of sub intervals. Why you are able to write? Is it always possible to come up with uh, finite number of closed? These are closed intervals, closed and bounded interval. You can call it. It is bounded in sense that length is finite. Closed and bounded interval. That means all the elements falls between any two fixed numbers. That, that is meaning of bounded. So it is a close. So it is a closed bounded in interval, and it is written as a union, finite union. This one n is finite, finite union. 
So, this, this n is the finite structure, what we got it here, this n is the finite structure, this, that, this n is finite. So, if you are having a closed and bounded interval or there is a guarantee that you will get a finite n and that guarantee is coming from Hanne-Borel theorem. Hanne-Borel theorem is there, who will say that how you will get uh, that uh, or if you are in learning theory, uh, then you can call it covering number. Learning theory, I am not asking machine learning, learning theory. Then this we call it covering number. We cover it. We have covered the given closed interval A B by finite number of closed interval, closed sub interval you can call it sub interval uh, this through. So, this n is the covering number, there is a guarantee finite. So, that covering number is coming from uh, Hanne-Borel theorem that simply you can say that. So, simply if you are having a, a closed and bounded interval, then you can always get a finite structure. But remember that uh, right now do not take in serious way, if you take uh, open interval 0, 1 or A, B, there is no guarantee to get n, there is no guarantee to get n and that one is part of uh, advanced analysis something like that, later you will come to know. So, right now do not ask that question, if I uh, come to explain that, it will be beyond of your scope right now. So, avoid that, simply say that if you are taking closed and bounded interval, you there is a guarantee to get a finite n, fix that finite n, that, that one is so simply uh, that finite n is giving finite a structure. Everyone got the meaning of finite a structure, why fi we come up with finite a structure? Do not say that I am talking about very advanced thing, I started with your high school uh, mathematics, uh, from there I come up with finite a structure. Okay. So, is it clear to everyone how, what is meaning of finite structure in continuous uh, set or continuous sample space? Is it clear or not? If it is not clear, again ask. Okay. So, now we will start with finite structure in continuous set and we will compute the probability measure. Okay. So, I need to erase all these. These, if I am writing something, you can note down all these. If time permit, in notebook you can note down, so, so that you can use your notebook as well. It is not like only listening class lecture. So, try to develop that habit as well. Actually, Google has al also closed the Jamboard. There was Jamboard for writing purpose. Uh, they have closed. I do not know why they have closed. That one was good for writing purpose. Okay, fine. So, uh, uniform probability measure is defined on a sample space with finite support. Finite support means uh, that we are defining our sample space is uh, coming as a finite, uh, it is a uh, finite interval, finite interval that means a close and bounded kind of interval, finite support. And sample space here it would be either finite set or a compact set. Compact means it is closed, that means it contains the end points in interval. Right now say that it is compact means it contains the end point and all the points between those end points, like closed interval. Right now uh, for your understanding call it a closed interval. Just call it closed interval A B kind of thing, this kind of interval. Compact just uh, here, uh, later you will understand that uh, what is meaning of compact, there are various way of defining, right now call it compact set a closed interval, okay, not more than that. Okay. So, if you are having a closed interval, always you come up with a finite structure. So, one example of sample space we have taken here A B, closed interval A B, it is a compact set. So, how we will come, come up with a finite uh, a structure? So, and we are taking uniform probability measure uh, or uniform law, uniform probability measure that means law is uniform, uniform law of occurrence. It is saying that we come up with partition of the interval A B through these partitioning point x0, x1, x2 up to xn, x0 equal to a and xn equal to b and these are the intermediate points. Okay. And having 
common width all the sub interval having same width delta and there are n number of delta so n time delta equal to width of the sub interval ab that one is b minus a so n time delta equal to b minus a so delta equal to b minus a divided by n you got it so if you are getting delta like this way it say that you are having sub interval each one is having the same width uniform that only again uniform is coming there same width so n number of such sub interval are there and we have written a b a, as a union of these sub interval it implies that through the uniform law we come up with that partition so that probability of occurrence in the first sub interval equal to probability of occurrence in the second sub interval <coughs> equal to probability of occurrence in the nth sub interval are you getting meaning of uniform this is the meaning of uniform law that probability of occurrence in the first sub interval equal to probability of occurrence in the second sub interval equal to probability of occurrence in the nth sub interval so like that that is the uniform law of occurrence that we see so it is not point wise it is partition wise partition wise it is going through partition wise okay probability uniform is going to part, partition wise and if you talk about probability of occurrence in a sub interval that would be proportional to length of the sub interval what is the length delta we have taken it. and we will find what is the proportionality constant do you know that proportionality constant is coming if you try to uh, convert that in the mathematical expression for proportionality constant will come there so here we are writing a proportionality constant ck so we have written k uh, ck means for kth sub interval we don't know all these c's are same or different you will see if you are taking uniform delta the same delta you will come to know all c's are same how because we have already seen this uniform law so through this uh, probability of this one is equal to what c1 times probability of first sub interval is what c1 times delta probability of nth interval is c2 time uh, so, uh, c, this one is c2 time delta probability of nth interval is cn time delta all these are equal and delta is common in all these so what will happen delta will cancel out and what we will have we will have c1 equal to c2 equal to c3 equal to cn if all are taking same value what does it mean it is not changing ci is are not changing the value that means we can say that at least all these n number of c's are having same value we can call it it is a constant that we denoted by c you can call it c that's why c we have written we call this constant c so that's why probability of a sub interval is equal to what c time delta c time delta okay this is coming with respect to uniform law of occurrence uniform probability uniform law it is coming through uniform law first now what is the second job second job is you have to apply property of a property or exams of probability measure what does it say that it say that probability of sample space is equal to 1 and sample space we have expressed in term of union of sub intervals union of sub intervals and uh, in all these sub interval there is no common thing except for the terminal point okay except except for the terminal points okay so easily it uh, it can be decomposed through the third exams of the probability measure what does it say that probability of a union b equal to probability of a plus probability of b and here in the continuous pro, uh, uh, sample space probability of a single point would be zero why it is zero if i am asking that you have to come in this class sharply at nine is it possible is it possible uh, event or not i am saying you have to come sharply at 9 is it possible either you will come few second before or few second after a few minute before a few minute after plus minus something so someone is saying that come sharply at night that one is actually uh, impossible kind of things practically impossible theoretically you can say that practically it is impossible so probability of if you, time is continuous 
continuous thing. So probability of occurrence at a point would be zero, exactly at a point would be zero, because that one is a very rare kind of thing, impossible kind of things. And if I'm saying that uh, uh, that you have to uh, sco uh, score uh, exactly 50 or something like that uh, with various component, is it, is it possible again? Various components, components are going in different different order. fraction will be, so plus minus kind of things would come again there. So, again, so if something varying in continuous fashion, uh, probability of uh, occurrence of a exactness would be zero, exact at a point would be zero, exact at point, so that would be zero. So that's why the common shared point, if you talk about we have taken like x1 is coming in the first sub interval and second sub interval in both. So, probability of occurrence of x equal to x1 would be 0. So, that one is not going to affect much. Okay. So, that is where here we can directly apply that additive property of the probability measure, it is sum of the probability of this sub interval. Okay. What is the probability of uh, first sub interval? It is n time now c time delta. Probability of second sub interval is c time delta. Probability of another sub interval is c time delta. So, sum would be n time c time delta. Uh, n time c time delta is equal to 1. And if you simplify what you get C, C you got it 1 by n time delta. Delta is what? B minus A by N. N will cancel out. And C is what? 1 by 1 by B minus A. That is the normalizing factor. So, what is the probability of occurrence of a uh, kth interval? Of, of kth interval it is C time delta that means delta by B minus A. What does it mean? What is delta? It is the width of the kth sum, inter sum interval and b minus a is the width of the sample space. So, what you got it? Probability of a sub interval, it is length of the corresponding sub interval divided by length, total length or length of the sample space, what you got it. So, now does it match with uh, what formula you had got in finite uh, discrete set? A sample space does it match? It is matching, matching in the sense that in finite uh, uh, sample space, there it was uh, cardinality. You are counting number of elements. There was no continuum of elements. Here we are so some kind of major we call major. Everyone comfortable with major uh, word? I am not asking the various mathematical form of that. Do you know major? What is meaning of major? M E A S U R E major. Measurement length like that. Okay. So measurement you measure something. So if you are having countable things, you measure by counting it. That we call it cardinality of that set. If you are having continuous set, you measure it by length. If you are having aerial kind of things, area is set having area, that one is covering area then we measure it by area like that. So, that is the, so major kind of things is coming. So, length of or measure of the sub interval divided by to, total measure of the sample space, what is under consideration. Are you getting meaning of this? So, this one is also coming, it is very much in par with the finite discrete sample space. Okay. Similar look, but here we are dealing with continuous sample space. That's way. So here also a finite things. Okay. Is it clear to everyone or not? If it is not clear, we will take example. So everyone might have seen uh, uh, circular dartboard. I am not talking about linear dartboard. So linear dartboard. That means uh, you have taken a line. There you come up with a uh, interval, uh, continuous minus one to one, and now in that line you have to hit that. You have to hit that along that line segment. Along that line segment you have to hit that. So, if I am asking hit at 0, is it possible directly? Can you hit little bit this that? Sometimes it may be possible. That event happens to be rare. That event happens to be rare. That occurrence might be very rare. But you can uh, so uh, uh, that uh, in uh, Olympic or in various pistol shooting game or uh, uh, various uh, yeah, shooting game you might have already seen that there are points point is not uh, for uh, hitting exactly at a point points would be that it will be divided into this circular region circular region radius radius y 
10 point we are uh, you are getting 10 point when the, the attack happens or shooting happens in the a smaller radius a smallest radius in the circular disc with a smallest radius then 9 point then 8 point then like that so that kind of thing so same dart game is here so here the radi radius is length here it is coming with respect to origin length so it is here interval interval is coming like that so it is a linear dart game so what consider a throw uh, consider one throw a dart at a linear dart board and measure the horizontal distance from the bullseye or center bullseye center that one is located at the origin okay x equal to 0 now so what would be the sample space what would be the sample space what are the possible outcomes that means what are the possible shooting uh, shooting that if you are part participating in shooting uh, game what would be the possible shot those which falls in the given circular region if someone is sort of shooting outside the region whether it will be counted not it is not a possible outcome so possible outcomes is what say collection of all possible outcomes would be those points which falls between minus 1 and 1 so sample space is minus 1 to 1 the close interval minus 1 to 1 you got the sample space you have completed the first basic concept sample space now you will go for uh, event some kind of event the event come up with like that you have to uh, one sub interval is designed you will win when you will hit in the given interval a b if you are hitting so there uh, then you will win if you are not hitting in that then other things some kind of lesser win or something like that some kind of things would be there so sub interval uh, suppose as a, uh, an event is assigned to hit in the interval a b so then what is the probability of a b definitely a must be greater than now greater than minus 1 greater than equal to minus 1 and b must be less than equal to 1 why because you are defining event as a collection of some possible outcomes some possible outcome possible outcome that means should come from the interval minus 1 to 1 that means must be a subset of interval minus 1 to 1 a sample of space and then you are computing probability of the event a b what would be that b length of the sub interval no information uh, is given that it is uniform or non uniform it is not given that uh, person coming from western country uh, they will be preferred over person from eastern country something like that it is not like that whether such kind of things are coming there in olympic no. uniform law is there so uniform there is no sub, such bias law. otherwise there would be they will lose the concept of game game or something like that so what is the probability of ab it is uh, length of the sub interval ab divided by length of the sample of space that one is what what is sample how, how you will compute 1 by 2 minus of minus minus of 1 by 2 so 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 equal to 1 so that length is one uh, simply that one is simple computation so probability yes Now information is given there, come up with unit uh, example. 
unit circle, unit disc, unit volume, like that. Various things are there. Now, second game, uh, we will take round dart board example. So here, what is the round? Again, I have taken unit. So again, you can raise a question, why one is here? So same thing is coming here. So x square plus y square less than equal to 1. That is the unit circle. And uh, what is the what is the uh, largest point that you will get there? If you are uh, playing uh, shooting game, what is the largest point? 10. So 10, that means in 100, you will convert into, uh, that one is the point. 0.10 percent, uh, sorry, 10 uh, percent you can call it, a uh, 0.01 you can convert it like that. So, we are taking it like this way. So, uh, event is you will win when you hit the, hit in the nearest circular region of the bullseye or center, okay, like that. So, that is the event. So, what is the probability of that? Area of, area concept will come here. Area of the event A divided by area of sample of space. What is the area of a uh, circle? Pi circular disk? Pi r square. So, pi into 1 square, pi simply and area of a. So, here it is unit. So, unit, uh, unit things <coughs> helping to compute uh, any concept in a very faster way. If you, you might have taken non-unit uh, radius, some fraction would be there, something, some extra computation would be there like 4, 5, 6, 7, then extra competition. So, unit is always, a square of unit is always 1. So, that is where these things are coming here. Yes? It would be given in question or it is given in question that event is given in question. I had told that uh, event is specified by a given uh, a statement. So, a statement is that you have to get 10 points and 10 point has been formulated in the mathematical form A x square plus uh, y square less than equal to 0 0.0, 0.1, so 0.01, sorry, 0.01. So, a square, you are doing a square now. So, it would be r square, r square form. So, that is why I have taken it in that form. So, r, what would be r? Point, point 0.1. Okay. Uh, that uh, another, actually, I should change. Another, this this problem is also coming false in that case. A person always arrives at his job between 8 a.m. to 8.20 a.m. He is equally likely to arrive any time within that time period. Equally likely means uniform law. Uniform law is given there. Then there are two questions. What is the probability that he will arrive sharp at 8.10 a.m.? Second question, what is the probability that he will arrive between 8.5 to 8.10 a.m. So, what is the answer of first question? 0. It is 0. What is the uh, width of uh, interval uh, point uh, 8.10 to point 8.10? What is the width of this, that uh, sub interval? It is 0. It is 0 or 0 by non-zero things is always 0. So, that is where you have computed it like this. So, first you have to compute the sample of space. What is the sample of space? It is, a, it is a very easy question. So, you have to compute the sample of space. So, compute the sample of space. It is 8 to 820 am. You can put in unit. Depends upon you can miss the unit. There is no issue. Or you can put for better understanding. And what is the event? There are two events. One event is containing single point. Another event is containing. So, I have uh, that one uh, event is this trivial kind of things, another is non trivial. So, I am talking about non trivial. Non trivial things, so A is non trivial. So, probability of A is what? Use the concept of uh, that uh, in the previous case, what we had used length of the sub interval divided by length of the sample of space. So, what is the length of uh, sub interval? It is 10, uh, sorry, 5, 10 minus 5, 10, uh, 5 uh, divided by 20, 1 by 4 answer is 1 by 4. So, this one is example of, so we are solving it uh, as continuous sample of space with finite structure. Any question here till now? I think these are very easy question. No? Does it look easy? Same question came here. Now, I am giving little bit uh, complicated question. Romeo Juliet name is just, uh, this example I have taken it from uh, that uh, 
MIT professor's book for that, uh, the Mithri Bartiskas and John Sitiskis. Yes. You can get this example from there. So here it is a coming question like this. Romeo and Juliet have a date on a given time and each will arrive at the meeting with a delay between 0 to 1 hour. And uh, with all the pair of delay are equally likely, means uniform, uniform law is coming. The first to arrive, the first to arrive and wait for 15 minutes and will leave the place if the other has not arrived. The first will wait for 15 minutes then leave, okay. Do you have to compute the probability of meeting? What is the probability of meeting? How you will compute that? It is uniformly distributed and the waiting time it is going from 0 to what? Delay time is 0 to 1 hour. So, a square simple a square you got it here and the waiting time is 15 minutes and the, so what would be the reason? 15 minutes means in hour if you convert what would be that? 15 by 60, 1 by 4. 1 by 4. So, 1 by 4, this is the uh, waiting time. This is the waiting time for Romeo, this is the waiting time for Juliet, something like that. So, it is coming. So, what is the sample of space? The square, 0, 1. Uh, the, this is square, okay. X is between 0, 1 and Y is between 0, 1. Delay time for Romeo and delay time for Juliet. Y is delay time for Juliet. Then, the event of interest is what? That means, the waiting time must be between, it would be must be less than 15, less than equal to 15. What is 15? 1 by 4. So, the difference must be less than equal to 1 by 4. So, in mathematically you have formula. This one is a um, linguistic statement and this you have converted into mathematical form. It is like, like that, okay. So, this, this is the M. So, how will compute probability of M? There are two ways. Either it compute uh, this probability and this probability or compute this probability. So, this one is, this segment and this one falls in the M complement, M complement. So, it is very easy to compute M complement. Why? It is having triangle shape and here it is 2D kind of thing. So, computing area is much easier. Computing area of triangle is much, much easier. So, what is area of this triangle? What is the area of this triangle? You have to find the this length and this length. That length is 3 by 4, 3 by 4. So, 3 by 4 into 3 by 4. What is the area of a triangle? Half into height into the base. So, height is 3 by 4, base is also 3 by 4 and half. And uh, how many? This one is also same similar kind of area. So, both will have same area. So, 2 into 1 by 2 into 3 by 4 into 3 by 4. Uh, that one is the area of interest, uh, sorry, uh, complement, M complement, area of, and so what is the probability of uh, M? 1 minus that area. So, it is, answer is very simple. So, how you go compute it? By using finite structure of sample of space and uniform probability law. Did you get meaning of this? Okay. And then other things will uh, shift towards non-uniform thing. Okay. So, for non-uniform things, uh, actually we will discuss in detail uh, such things there in uh, uh, second module in detail. Second module in detail we will discuss and we actually one another problem you can see it uh, uh, a spin, a spin a wheel of fortune game. It is. So, that in, if you are visiting, uh, so if you are watching some movie and casino game observed there, then there you may ha might have already seen some kind of wheel, turning wheel, something like that and it is taking. So, it is it is based on that and solution is coming in the same way, I, I do not have to explain in detail. And another question, I, this I, sh I should talk because uh, uh, most of uh, students are coming from uh, that uh, outside hostel. No? So, you should talk about this actually waiting time for bus. So, we are waiting for a bus at the bus stop. We make the modeling assumption that the bus always comes within at most one hour, okay. But is equally likely to come at any time within the hour, equally likely, uniform law, equally likely. Uniform. Equally likely means uniform law. So, what would be sample of space? 0 to 1. Unit is hour. Consider for example, the 
following subset A and B of sample space A is x to x plus epsilon the bus is coming time x to x plus epsilon and then another event is bus is coming between wait, actually waiting time is between y to y plus epsilon like that okay so what is the probability of a it is the length of sub interval a that would be epsilon why because equally likely assumption is there it is mentioned there equally likely assumption there our uniform law is there so probability of a is equal to epsilon probability of b is also epsilon and if i am asked i am asking what is the probability of x what is the probability of x zero it is impossible to uh, talk about that kind of event For, okay so that one is and in the various things you can define it like that so same example is coming uh, same exam it, it is followed now take epsilon plus minus one second epsilon take plus minus one second then what would be the probability plus one minus again you have to express in term, term of fraction you have to and also you have to uh, make it in hour because the, the sample space we have taken hour in hour unit is hour so you have to convert you, uh, you have to do all these conversion these are very simple conversion there is no much difficulty in all these okay so i just uh, i would like to highlight conditional probability here conditional probability i had told that why conditional probability we are talking about so we are having a random experiment and there we have been asked to compute probability of an event so that uh, computation approach through probability measure we have already seen that those happens to be very much theoretical very much theoretical and uh, in uh, this just in finite sense we are able to compute it finite sense we are able to compute it what about other in other cases like that so in other cases what we have to come up with partial information that means someone is giving like uh, one partial information like that in this course you will perform good if i am saying that uh, i am giving uh, like uh, information that uh, in quiz one you have to uh, study lectures lectures up to the date up to the date of uh, quiz up to the date of the quiz like i i i'm i'm planning what, what is date today 9 no i'm planning a quiz on 20 suppose i'm planning a quiz on 20th uh, 20th september then you have to cover the lecture you have to study the lecture till 19th if you're not uh, if such information is not passed to you what will happen you don't know up to what segment you have to cover like that you don't know what segment so you, little bit uh, you you would be suspicious in that why not we should cover past few lectures why not we should cover last few lectures but i am saying that now you have to uh, i am giving a partial information that you have to cover your uh, study till 19th lecture the, like uh, lecture taken on 19th uh, september then you have to so that kind of partial information and if sometime i will say that now in the, uh, that uh, uh, another exam i am saying that i will uh, take exam from only up to that date lectures between that date lectures okay then you have to re read that now so that is the partial information and based on that uh, you you will work on those problems you work on those theories and so that you will improve your marks but I, if i am not saying anything what will happen what will happen that means you are dealing with the sample space directly you are not dealing with partial information conditioning thing so that is the meaning of conditioning so conditioning is coming through some statement some additional in information uh, regarding to compute the um, probability okay are you getting meaning okay so the partial information suppose that we know that outcome is within some given event now we used to quantify the likelihood that what is the probability of a what is the probability of a so so here so that's way the partial information is given to you then you say that it is given it is given so we are computing probability of a an event in the scenario b given scenario so given means given scenario given scenario b so probability of a given b is how much a is happening within b you will read it how much a is happening within b 
you are not saying how much a is happening within sample space you are saying how much a is happening within b so it is definition but best way to define it you will say that uh, how much a is happening within b you will say that happening how much a uh, number uh, uh, actually i should not call it i haven't called a the what is uh, we are dealing in finite sample space or infinite i haven't so so simply say that how much a is happening within b how you read how much a is happening within b i you can note down your notebook how much a is happening within b a is occurring or happening within b within b or in b you can call it okay so do we have time i think we don't i will go for attendance so i will display the qr code